This is AndyTube. This is the first video of a new series I'm starting about the Singer Model 413 Stylist Zigzag Sewing Machine. And that's what this is. Uh, in the series, I'm going to go through uh, features of the machine, uh, threading, bobbin winding, um, adjusting, and uh, we'll, we'll just see where it takes us. But uh, I've had this machine for a while, and uh, I wanted uh, to go through it. It's, it's really not going to be a restoral because the machine is incredibly uh, clean. But I'll, I'll do some cleaning inside, and uh, one, I'll have a video about the proper way to lubricate it. Because, in, in my opinion, the instruction manual that came with the machine is quite lacking. Um, in detail about lubricating the machine. They only show basic and they wanted you to go to the Singer store. But let's do this first video which is just talking about the features of this stylus uh, sewing machine. Now it was uh, made between 1972 and 1978 is uh, when Singer made this uh, 4, 413 model. They also have a 413K that um, they made for a couple of years uh, over in Scotland and it, it's a little different than this uh, model. It just had It had a few more uh, mm, stitch patterns. But I'll start you out uh, you know just with the view you're gonna have sitting in front of a machine like this and I'm gonna show you um, some of the different parts here and explain what they are. This, it, this um, part of course is the needle thread tension dial. We've seen this on many many singers, different versions of this and this is a very common the style of it with the indicator dial plus and minus uh, you know, from zero up to nine. Uh, it has uh, three tension discs because you can twin needle sew on this machine. But it's right there in the front. It's easy to see and easy to use. Uh, one of the nice things about Singers. This first control up here next to the red S is the stitch width um, lever. Uh, this controls the width of a zigzag stitch and it's just a slide lever it just you know uh, when it's all the way over left that is zero which means the machine's going to operate in straight stitch uh, as you start moving it to the right it's just going to start making a zigzag stitch there's nothing else you uh, need to do as far as going from straight uh, to zigzag uh, just start moving that uh, stitch with lever over. The next lever uh, you depress down and slide left and right and that's simply the needle position lever. Um, most of the sewing you do on a machine like this is in the center but you can move the needle, needle left uh, which can help when you're putting in zippers. You can move it to the right you can do some pattern sewing in the right when you want to make a very fine uh, pattern stitch close to the uh, seam or edge of a fabric. You can do your twin needle sewing with it left or in center. And it's just a very simple mechanism up there that just moves the needle bar vibrating bracket and therefore the needle bar itself left and right. Maybe see it moving there a little bit. So very very simple. Like I said, you're looking right at it. Very easy to, to see and operate. This is a stitch control uh, knob. And uh, you can set the stitch length or number of stitches just by turning this knob. And it will go from 6 up to 20, just like that, and anything in between. 
and then you can get into this uh, fine area over here which gives a closer and closer uh, uh, stitches uh, usually this area is used for a zigzag when you want to make a real tight satin stitch and it also has a position for when you use a flexi stitch which I'll explain in a little bit um, and this whole stitch control knob is depressed in or pushed in when you want to sew in reverse now unlike the uh, earlier singers where you had a lever you moved up and down this you push in um, some people prefer the old method because this you have to push in and hold where the other lever you could just throw up and sew in reverse and then throw down but I, I think Singer's position was people don't sew a lot in reverse. It's usually just to finish off seams and, and so forth. So it's just a push, push and hold, reverse sewing, and uh, release back out for forward sewing. And this smaller knob down here below the little face plate is the on-off uh, switch and uh, it operates both power to the motor and uh, power to the light so when that switch is on your light is on and the motor is on um, I'll, I'll go up on the top here now and show you some of the uh, features up here and the controls up here um, up above the needle bar area at the nose is a dial and that is called the pressure dial and it has uh, numbers of course um, you know it's uh, like a zero um, which which would be actually a D for darn setting and uh, which isn't going to put any pressure on the pressure bar and then one through eight and you just uh, click it, it kind of rotates and has stops, two, three, four, five, like that. And that controls the pressure on the presser bar and therefore the foot, presser foot. Up here is the thread take up lever mechanism that works uh, inside with the counterbalance and the needle bar and that uh, goes up and down as you sew to uh, take up the slack of the thread. It helps keep the thread taut uh, on the way down until the needle pierces the fabric. And then after the hook grabs the thread and is forming the lock stitch, it's going to come back up to pull up the slack. Just the way you would when you hand sew and you you know you take a needle and you put your stitch through the fabric and then you grab the needle and you pull out the slack of the thread. This helps that operation, the thread take up lever. And then this um, up here has two purposes. Uh, one, it's a thread guide for the thread coming off the spool pins, uh, clips behind there and goes on down to the needle thread tension unit but that little disc on top contains a spring and this is the, the disc part is the bobbin thread tension unit uh, bobbin winding thread tension unit so when you are winding a bobbin you want a certain amount of tension on that thread on the way to the bobbin so the bobbin winds evenly, evenly. so this is a dual purpose thread guide and bobber winder thread tension. This is a cover plate screw up here. As we go over to the right over here you'll see some more controls here. There's two spool pins with felts. Okay and the reason that there is two is because this machine can twin needle sew. Now Singer makes a needle that has uh, one post I guess I'd call it that goes up into the needle clamp but it has two needles on it so you can twin needle sew 
and if we keep coming over to the right here we'll see the bobbin winder mechanism system here so this is the bobbin holder the spindle right there this chrome piece up here you see a screw it's adjustable so uh, you can set that so that uh, when your bobbin gets full it will disengage the bobbin winder automatically and stop uh, winding and uh, you know if you want your bobbin to hold as much as possible when you're winding it you can uh, adjust it that way if you want it to hold less you loosen the screw and you move it closer so you can control that and to activate the bobbin winder up here it just has a simple uh, twist lever when it's down it says so and when you want to wind you you turn it up to wind and it moves the spindle over up here but inside it moves the friction ring or rubber tire over to make contact with the back of the hand wheel which is what actually turns the bobbin winder so if you watch it here you will see it click over and as it fills up it gets to a point it will automatically click off or you can manually wind however much you want then stop the machine and turn it off now before the bobbin winder for many years was on the front of the machine a little lift up lever and then they went to this bobbin winder system up on top as part of that bobbin winding system you have the stop motion nut or knob and that's the small uh, knob inside the hand wheel the hand wheel or the balance wheel you know as you uh, run the motor that that turns in a counterclockwise and makes everything go if you want to wind the bobbin um, they made it so you can stop the motion of the needle and the feed dog by holding the outer wheel and turning the inner knob to the left and it just turns a little bit and it stops there's a stop in there and that frees up motion so when you run the motor the hand wheel is going to turn and if you've engaged the bobbin winder system up here let's see if I can move this back a little bit if you've engaged the bobbin winder and you're running the motor it will still turn the hand wheel to turn the spindle and wind the bobbin okay but when you disengage that stop motion system the needle does not go up and down anymore and the feed dogs don't move okay and to re-engage it on this machine you just do the opposite you hold the hand wheel and you turn that stop motion knob back to the right and you'll feel it bind on the stop motion clamp and you're good to go now you, you're in the sewing position you are, you are not stopping the motion of the needle bar and the feed dog so when the motor turns the hand wheel now the needle bar and the feed dogs are working again now there's a couple of reasons Singer did that one was to uh, figuring less wear and tear on the machine every time you wound a bobbin but also uh, they did that because if you're in the middle of sewing a project and you you have a fabric on here and you don't want to lose your place um, you know you can disengage all this and wind a bobbin and put a new bobbin in without taking your fabric off or or even lifting the needle out of the fabric if you want you can just stop all that motion and a lot of people don't know this but you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing if you know that you uh, are going to be running out of bobbin thread before too long uh, you can put a spool up there on one of those spindles and you can uh, wind a bobbin while you're sewing 
uh, on, on your project. Let me finish up with this uh, right side here. There's a couple more things back here I just wanted to make you aware of. So we're getting kind of close here. See if I can get, maybe I can move this light around a little bit. Try and get it back here a little. So you saw, you've seen that. Um, this is the the terminal where you uh, all the light wires and motor wires and the switch wire are terminated on post here, and this is where you plug in the cords. And I'll show you the cords in a little bit. And then these two. Um, yeah, maybe I can give you a better, a better shot of these. Yeah, you see these two little, these are made out of vinyl, and they're seldom used because people don't know what they do, but they, they're, they're made so that you can pull it out, wrap it around the cord, and push it back in, so your cords stay inside the uh, cabinet, and you can hang the machine down in a cabinet from the hinges and not worry about pinching the cords or anything like that. That's what those are for. And that later they went to just one, having one. And some of the machines, they just have one. But this machine uses a three-way cord, which I'll be showing you. And they were kind enough to put two of them here. So if you have your machine mounted in a cabinet, which it can do, then uh, it's it's handy to have those and just a quick look at the back side um, this is one of the two uh, hinge holes and this is the other one over here and the standard singer like lollipop hinge post goes in there and there's a set screws here that tighten against it and that's made so you can mount your machine in the cabinet and lift it up and fold it down in the cabinet when you're done sewing and then swing it back up on the hinges. Um, there's uh, some paint branding here and then you have the presser bar lifter lever. right? Nice chrome lever that raises the presser foot and lowers the presser foot. Okay. I might as well bring you back around to the front of this, the nose, and here. And there is a thread guide here when you're running your needle thread. And there's a thumb screw where you take off this cover plate or nose plate when you want to clean and lubricate the presser bar, needle bar, take up lever, like that. Okay, so it's real, real easy. Uh, some of them have a screw you had to remove with a screwdriver. Some just swing out like the Rocketeers, and uh, um, some have a thumb nut or thumb screw, and that's what this one has. So we've taken a tour around the machine, except for the bobbin, uh, uh, bobbin. Uh, and feed dog area here. So let me let me cover this. Oh wait, let me show you that cord when I talked about the three-way cord. This is the three-way cord and it has one lead or wire coming from the electrical outlet and it has one wire going to the foot controller that controls the speed of the machine and then it has the actual plug that plugs into the terminal I showed you. And there are uh, three pins in that terminal, three metal pins, match up with these three holes. And there's a little uh, finger grips on the side. I'll show you how it looks from the back when you plug it in. And, uh, you know, you don't want to pull it out by the cords. It's made to grip it like that and wiggle it and pull it out. And this machine uses what's called a clamshell style. 
uh, not the old button style. This is a clamshell style foot controller. Just press it down with your foot. It uses a carbon stack. Mm -hmm. Just uh, snap open. We'll be discussing that in one of the videos. But that's your three-way cord and foot controller. So now what's left here is the needle plate and the bobbin slide plate, the bobbin cover. And we'll slide that open and get it over here where we can see it nice. And what we've got is a class 66 clear plastic bobbin. Dozens of machines that use this system. And the hook in this machine is a horizontal rotary hook. Um, the hook grabs the thread, wraps it around the bobbin, uh, and then the take-up lever pulls it up, and that's how you form your stitch. So one needle going down, grabbing the thread, wrapping it around. The next time it finishes the stitch. So every two strokes of the needle bar makes one locked stitch. Okay, And you have uh, <clears throat> um, this is a straight shank, a straight needle bar. It's not a slant machine like the 301, 401, 403, 404, 500, the touch and sews. This is a, the stylish machines were this original straight shank with uh, called a low shank and uh, you have a pressure foot that still clamps on with a little thumb screw but then on the end of that <coughs> the feet themselves are what's called snap-on so when you push up on the front of the foot and push down on the back it snaps off like this is your multi-purpose foot just snaps off and if I wanted to put on a special purpose foot like I would use to make a satin stitching or a buttonhole you just put it under the little snap on extension and you lower see I can do this without blocking your view you lower the pressure bar onto the little center connector and if it doesn't snap on you just push down on the thumb screw and then it snaps on so that's how easy it is to change the foot and you can use a zipper foot and a hammer foot and several other feet will go on there <coughs> um, you you can remove the needle plate for cleaning and to put on a different needle plate they give you two with this machine <clears throat> and to to remove or change the needle plate uh, when you know when you slide this open it has a natural point that it wants to stop but if you if you slide it a little bit more it activates a lever that raises this spring-loaded retaining post. So you, you watch that while I push this, uh, or pull this slide plate back another half inch or so, and you'll see that post pop up. Then you can come in on the right side and lift that plate and just slide it off. And this is your multi-purpose uh, needle plate. And you see it slides on there, and then it just has a steel post over here that, that goes up in that hole. And the other plate that, that, that came with this one was called a feed cover plate. 
the, there's no way to drop the feed dog and you don't have a lever anywhere to lower the feed dog so what you do is you change to this plate needle plate that has a raised area over the feed dog and you just slide it on make sure it lines up with that guide post over there and when you close the slide plate for the bobbin case that lever will release and the spring will go down and hold that plate okay so you can also uh, have an occasion to pull this out besides cleaning the area you may want to remove your bobbin case and it's still in this model uh, from 1972 to 1978 they still used a metal bobbin case and it has a bobbin case positioning spring and bracket and you can pick up an edge with a thumb or fingernail or you can use a small screwdriver but you you pick it up like that and you lift it a little and swing it to the right out of the way from the bobbin case it's on a hinge screw back here and it actually has two raised edges so you can actually use two fingers if you want and you lift it up above an adjustment screw and you swing it to the right and it only moves about a quarter of an inch but it is just enough to get that so you can turn that bobbin case and pull it out and this is a class 66 bobbin case and here is the hook and let me rotate it a little bit there is the hook point right there so you see it's rotating on a horizontal plane so it's called a horizontal rotary hook and it's a class 66 hook bobbin case and bobbin and when you want to put that back in you would rotate the hand wheel towards you till the needles up and you put it down guide that little fork onto a little post down there push it a little to the left onto the hook race and then you slide that positioning bracket and spring back over onto the edge of the hook and then you've got your uh, bobbin case back in there so it's nice to take that out once in a while and you need to clean around the edges of the bobbin case where it rides on the hook and you need to clean all the lint around it <coughs> and underneath it so it's good to know that this is so easy to do then with the needle all the way up and the slide plate all the way back to raise the uh, clamp there we'll put our original multi-purpose needle plate and the front front drop in bobbin it's called I'll be showing you how to do all that and thread it and everything in another video and that's it so that's just a tour of the mm, features uh, let me put this other foot back on here before I forget up in the front down in the back snap off put the foot you want to use under the extension and lower it down and sometimes it'll snap itself like I said if it doesn't you can just push down on the uh, thumb screw okay. so I wanted to show you the features let me uh, let me plug it in here like I said the cord just plugs in down here it's just uh, like that 
You can't plug it in wrong because it won't fit. Okay. Plug it into the electrical over here. All right. And then I'll turn this off just for a moment. So when you see when you turn this on, the light come on. Turn it off. On. Off. On. So. Um, once it's threaded up and so forth, you just. Um, you know, put on the foot controller and there you go. And you can reverse on the fly. If you're sewing along and you're coming to the end of the seam or there's a place you want to reinforce by backstitching, you can be sewing along and go ahead and reverse it for a few stitches and then let it go. You don't have to, you know, stop sewing, push in the reverse, sew a little bit back, stop sewing, let it out. You can, you can do it while you sew. Reverse on the fly. Mm -hmm. Now what makes this, uh, you know, a lot of people will call this, oh, it's just one of those old basic singers, you know, it's not the Slantomatic or something like that, the famous 401A, the Cadillac. But uh, it's a very versatile machine, and it has uh, stitches up here uh, and a flexi stitch. So there's there's a pattern selector in here, like a little baby cam stack, and it's got a couple of cams, and you choose which one you're going to use by turning this wheel left for zigzag or rick rack, and you swing it to the right, and you get a little click for a blind hem and overcast so this is like an edger stitch and blind hem for doing um, blind hems you know cuff hems and dress hems and stuff and uh, the way that you switch from zigzag to rick rack or from blind hem to the red overcast stitch besides selecting left and right there's a flexi stitch wheel up here and when it is in the zero uh, p position, black zero, you see that? That means you're going to be doing the black stitches, which is regular zigzag or blind hem. When you want to use the flexi stitch to make the rick rack or overcast, you just turn this wheel and it moves some levers and stuff inside and it will come up with a red bar right there and you line that red bar with a little red arrow and that's your basic rick rack left and overcast right so if you don't have a a serger you can make a nice little overcast stitch right with this machine so it's not as basic as a lot of people think and then with this um, flexi stitch too you can control the, the red stitches a little bit by moving this left and right. It's a little adjustable depending on how long of a stitch you're going to do and how wide you don't want that blind hem to be looking like a pyramid you know you want it you want to, to be a little tighter and you want your overcast stitch to be real tight like down up over down up back down up and then along. You don't want it uh, like a zigzag on the side. You actually want the overcast. And this can help you fine tune that stitch. So yeah, at first glance it looks like a, you know, a real basic a sewing machine. But it's it's got some nice extra stitches there. It's very easy to use. Uh, you know, people say, oh, this is great for a first-time sewer. Uh, anybody who crafts or sews, it's a good machine for. Um, you know, yes, for, for beginning sewers, if you don't know how to sew, it's a good machine because it's uh, simple to use. But, but isn't that what you want? It's like when you drive a car, 
you know you 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 drive it you want controls you understand the main goal is to drive the car and get where you're wanting to go and the main con the main goal with this kind of stylist stylist machine is to do your crafting and sewing and it's real good on crafting projects and it's great on making clothes so um as we go along in, in the other videos that I'll be doing in this series, you'll learn more and more about the Singer 413 Stylist. And this basic setup is very similar to many, many other machines in the 400 series. And, um, um, you know, like the um, 457 was a real popular machine. Um, and, and there's others and then you get into the 500 600 and then you get into the slant needle and so forth but um, it's a nice little machine I think you're going to be surprised when you see the videos uh, how strong it is too it's a strong little machine and it's it's metal it's mostly metal you know it's cast aluminum a lot of steel shaft in there and steel pulleys it is a belt driven hook and a belt driven motor compared to the the 401A or the Rocketeers but that doesn't mean it's a bad machine so thanks for tuning in for this tour of the features of the 413 stylus and I'll hope you tune in again as I add some more videos to the playlist thanks so much for watching my channel I appreciate it I hope to see you again and take care